Well, for more on this story, we can cross now to France 24's Andrew Hillier, who's standing by in Kyiv. Now, Andy, as we know, Russia has continued to target Ukraine's critical infrastructure. What more can you tell us about these recent blackouts? Well, as you mentioned there, yeah, President Volodymyr Zelensky uh, saying that about yeah, 9 million Ukrainians still remain without uh, electricity. And uh, earlier today, Ukraine's energy minister also uh, saying that his big fear was that uh, Russia would intensify its bombardment of critical energy infrastructure around key festive dates uh, like the New Year. So there is that fear of more blackouts, uh, of more uh, attacks. Uh, we also heard from uh, Ukraine's state energy company saying that there was a, still a huge shortfall in electricity across the country due to those bombardments. I mean, here in Kyiv, uh, the situation has notably improved over the past week. One of the things we've been reporting on during our time here in Ukraine is the energy crisis. Just yesterday, we were in the region of Kharkiv in a village uh, some 10 kilometers away from the Russian border. It was at one point in the early stages of the war caught up uh, in the front line. So it was on the front line. So it suffered heavy uh, bombardment from both sides. It's been without electricity for 10 months. But despite that, you still have villagers living in these far-flung places who have grown used to life without running water, without electricity. And it's only now, 10 months later, that electrical engineers have been able to start the work hooking these villages back up to the power grid. But of course, they do that work um, a great risk to their lives as the risk of landmines. Yeah. And of course, there's there's the fact that they're doing the work in, uh, in, in the middle of winter now with uh, freezing temperatures. Now, um, we understand in a show of support, France's defense minister, Sebastian Lecornu, will be visiting Ukraine tomorrow. Uh, it's his first trip to the country since the start of Russia's invasion. What more can you tell us about this visit? That's right. Well, uh, the French defense minister indeed expected in Kyiv tomorrow. He'll visit his uh, uh, Ukrainian counterpart. He's expected uh, to visit a monument where he'll uh, he'll pay tribute to those who have died in the war here in Ukraine. And uh, that visit comes on the back of comments by French President Emmanuel Macron, who pledged to continue arms deliveries to Ukraine well into 2023, including, of course, those Caesar cannons. You know, you have to bear in mind Ukraine has become very much reliant on uh, continued Western military support uh, so it can uh, uh, continue uh, fighting against Russia. But you have to put this visit into context, too, because many here have criticized uh, President Macron over what they regard as what, what they see as his ambiguous stance uh, towards the war in Ukraine. Uh, he's positioned himself as being far more open to talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin than many other Western leaders. And that's drawn a lot of criticism here. Um, you know, one of the comments he made a few months ago was was he said that uh, President Putin uh, shouldn't be humiliated over his decision to start the war. So that also drew sharp criticism uh, from the government, uh, from the Ukrainian president. So it will be very interesting to see how this visit uh, pans out tomorrow. Andy, thanks so much for that update. We're going to have to leave it there. That's France 24's Andrew Hillier reporting from Kyiv.